we have come to receive from you. Offer our spiritual act of worship. Have fellowship with your spirit divine and with our neighbor. We pray that at the end of the day we will receive instruction from you. May this instruction abide. There are some who receive instruction and it burdens them. And there are some who receive instruction and act upon them. We pray that we will be the ones who will receive instructions and act upon. We pray in the name of Jesus and rebuke sickness. I come against every sickness in the blood, in the vein, in the body of Christ, in your souls, in your bone, in loins, every part of you. I curse sickness in Jesus' name. I command that you will be released from the shackles of every sickness and everything which is not of God, every infirmity leave you. And I commit our gathering unto your hand, O oh Lord. Take glory as we pray for those who are on vacation, those who are still at work. Protect them. As many you ordain to bring today, let them be able to come. Bless us all alike in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. We thank God for today's meeting as well. Actually, July has a different team. But we have crossed the first Sunday without tackling the team because of what we had to do from the month of June. Amen. Amen. And so we've crossed the month of recognition and identity. And I believe, even though I did not finish, you have great understanding as to who God is. Amen? Amen. Because we have come to understand that when we say divine, we are talking about everything about God and all that has to do with God. Divine. And so if we are talking about divine recognition, we are not just talking about your recognition, your identification. We are talking about God's way of seeing you. Amen. Amen. And how humanity sees God. There are different perceptions about God. And I have said... As the Bible says, no one has seen God before. And yet the Bible says, everyone has seen God. From opposite side. And yet, it's not contradicting. In my book, On Who is God, which is still out that you know, I said the reason why the Bible says no one has seen God before is you cannot describe God to persuade me to believe that is all he is. If it's possible that the disciple he loved according to the scriptures, the disciple who leaned at his back could see him and fall and die. The same who sat at with him. How can you describe this God? How? The attempt to describe God is feeble. Because the way Moses knew God was different from the way Abraham knew God. Look at the disciples who were going to Emmaus. He walked with them. He walked with them. How can I be walking with you? And you are calling me Regina. Whilst you know I'm your pastor, Pastor Mark. But the people were walking with God. And they, they never saw him as the one they used to know. And so we have come to tell you. You must be persuaded in your spirit that there is God. Not because someone is telling you, but because the Bible says so. Amen. 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 And so we saw about four things. Uh, my daughter is not here today. Maybe we will not see, but 
Uh, the rest of you, if it's possible to uh, let us see, so our brethren who are here for the first time will also know. We said in divine recognition and identity, there were four things we were looking at. How God sees us. How you see God. Your knowledge and understanding, perception about God. And to understand these two well, you must also understand who you are. Amen? Amen. And also understand how people see you. These will help you to know God well and know yourself better. Amen? Amen. And so in case you did not get it, just listen to the messages on YouTube and on Facebook. Amen. Amen. And so one, key point, how God sees you and your own understanding and perception in God. Two, how you know God and see God. Three, how one sees himself or herself. And this is a very controversial one because we said it must be done in line of scriptures. Because if you see yourself as that rich man, if you see yourself as that highly educated, that politician, that you have failed, you must see yourself in the line of God, that is a standpoint. It's your status, your identity. It can never change. Because if you see yourself from the lens or in the lens of the world standard, you will be carried on with wings of situations and the things that happen around you. Look at what happened to Job. He didn't have the understanding you and I are having today, so he thought his, I mean, life is ended. Then when God came in, God asked him, had the gate of death been open to you? Oh, really? I wasn't going to die. Somebody meant death for you, but I never approved. And so whoever is after your life will fail because until God says yes, uh, it can never uh, happen. Amen. Amen. But what about what I went through? I allowed that which you went through to happen to prove a point. To you that you have what it takes to stop the enemy. And the enemy cannot kill you if you remain in me. Resist him in me. And he will flee. Amen. Amen. And so Gideon, look at Gideon, a coward. Go hiding, doing things, and God came. And by virtue of divine understanding of who he is, God called him by the name heaven knows. Mighty man of valor. And he looked back. Nobody was standing there. Sir, are you talking to me? First of all, how did you find me here? Because nobody knows I am here. Nobody's supposed to know. I am hideout. To your neighbor and say, God knows wherever you are. There is no darkness in him. You cannot hide. Amen. Amen. But Gideon started seeing himself as a coward and a failure because of situation. Situations come and go. They are not permanent. So don't define your identity and who you are by what you are going through now. Then I should have stopped preaching. Looking at what is happening or has happened to the church now. I should have. But I will continue to do the work of God. Amen. Amen. Why should I only be happy in God because the church was full? No. Corona or no corona, people come in again or not come in again, as far as you say to yourself, I will go, I will come to preach. Amen. 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 No matter how many. And this is what makes God God. He is unchangeable. And he expects you to be unchangeable. 
Don't be swift to be tossed here to and fro. Amen. Amen. July. July is divine explosion and expansion. You can say divine revealing and expansion. It's okay. But today I am not touching that because I have received uncountable calls from people because of dreams they have been having. Many that were calling me are not even members of this church. But I keep saying that in summer, let me see if I have dates. Yes, I have date on dates. I prepared this 2009, 14th uh, May, 2009. I first taught this in Holland. 2003, what I'm about to teach now. 2003, I taught it in Holland. And 2010 or 11, I taught it here in Belgium. And I made this also in 2009. I have said and I repeat, summertime, people, you will even sleep daytime and have nightmare. That is summer for you. You might not see yourself as a dreamer, but in summer you will dream. But many of the dreams you dream, you must not pay attention to every. Are you with me? In fact, to, to some, every dream matters. That it is my prayer at the end of this brief moment, I'm going to share this with you because we cannot do all. You will have understanding because there are five words seeing dreams and or vision. Because dream and vision are not the same. Amen. Amen. We will, if we have the time, we will see them all from the Bible. But I'm not sure we'll be able to do all today. Dreams and visions are not the same. Dreams has to do with what we were familiar with during the day, either by sight, hearing, or anything around us throughout the day that influence our thoughts, thinking faculty, that made us to go to bed with because there were memories of these into the subconsciousness. And so when you sleep, that which you were familiar with through the day can also show up back in your mind. That is dictionary for you. According to English Dictionary. According to English Dictionary, let me see if I define dream by all means. According to English Dictionary, dream is the thoughts of the day one carries to bed or the thoughts that passes through the mind while asleep. When I was thinking about this many years ago, I came to understand that if we do not teach people to understand, people will take every dream important and end up destroying themselves. And so I came to five steps or five ways of seeing dream. And these five ways are also prayer points. Amen. In addition to the prayer point, three more prayer points to make it eight. And so five words to see dreams and eight ways to pray over your dreams. 
And so those who have been calling me and are not members of this church and will be watching on Facebook or YouTube, follow and understand. Because at the end of the day, if every dream becomes important to you, you will do something you don't have to do. Somebody said, just somebody, not just somebody, he says he's a man of God, he's a pastor, he's a prophet, and he has followed me. And he said, if you have a dream, and you see a white man, it means an angel has come to visit you. Oh, you have it, 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 they are on the internet. And he was bold and confident saying it at one of the FM stations. And so if I have a white friend and I have a dream going out with him or he pay me a visit, an angel has come. Look at how people can mislead. You have a dream, your food is on a coal pot. We, do we know coal pot? Yes. Yeah? The African way of, uh, you know, cooking. We put charcoal in it, we light it, and we put food in it. So your food is on coal pot. And uh, it falls. It means your marriage is going to crash. And so what about if I am a bachelor? I'm a Spencer. People don't have understanding. And yet, they have followed me. According to English Dictionary, we can see dreams as thoughts of the day. Thoughts of the day. He did not say thoughts of the night. Thoughts of the day. That we carry it to bed at night. Because it, during the day, you came across and you came in contact with many things. It can influence you, but if we lean only on the dictionary me meaning, we will also miss a point. Because we are not just physical beings, we are spirit beings. We don't only get knowledge about this life, we get knowledge from God as well. Amen. And so I came to understand that there is the difference between dreams and vision. The thin line between dreams and vision is until you sleep, you cannot dream. Amen. Amen. You must first sleep before you dream. But vision, you can see vision whilst asleep and whilst awake. Amen. Amen. I have heard some men of God telling evangelists with following great men, you know, they say vision is seeing things whilst awake. But if you study the Bible, you can also sleep and see vision. And you can be awake and see vision. The only difference between dreams and vision is dreams you must sleep. You see dreams only while asleep. The vision you can see while asleep and while awake. Turn to your neighbor and say, make yourself ready yes. for what is coming. The first thing is we have canal dreams. The five way of seeing dreams. The first one is canal dream. The second one, Satan can reveal some things to you. And third one, God can also 
reveals Satan's plan to you. The fifth one, or the fourth, the fourth, right? God can give you a warning through dreams. This is not his perfect plan for you. Number five, God can also reveal to you his perfect plan. To you, whether in dreams or in vision. Number six, seven and eight are only prayer points when it comes to praying over your dreams. But number one to five are ways of seeing dreams and are also prayer points. Amen. Amen. And so number six is only a prayer point. Number seven, number eight. So listen. Dreams. One wakes up and cannot remember. It's a prayer point. I haven't taught yet, so when I'm teaching, then you understand what it means. I'm just giving out lines. Number seven, dreams not understood. Somebody can dream, remember everything, but doesn't understand. The final one, number eight, dreams you remember and understood. What should you do with it? Amen. Amen. With this understanding at the back of your mind, let me give you one or two scriptures. So we bring the service to a close and we have our meeting. Daniel chapter number 2, verse number 28 to 29. So we will find time to pray and this should be something you will do every day whether you remember your dream or not when you pray this way you will clear your mind for peace Amen, Amen. I do it every day my wife does it every day it will not take you two minutes to pray through these eight areas. The same way when I was teaching the Lord's Prayer, I said, the nine petitions, it shouldn't take you five minutes or three minutes to finish, but with understanding, you can meditate upon and it will take you hours in prayer. But if you want to just Pray over the Lord's prayer, you call, which I said is wrong. The disciples' prayer. It shouldn't take you more than one minute. Amen? Amen. The same way this thing we are teaching. So Daniel chapter 2, verse number 28 says, But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has let the king, Nebuchadnezzar, know what will happen in the last days. Your dream and the vision that came into your mind as you lay in bed were these. Wait, before we go. Wait. Daniel here mentioned dreams and vision relating it to bed, to sleep. And so you cannot relate vision to only whilst awake. Amen. The king was in bed. Your dream and the visions, singular, plural, should tell you something. Amen. Amen. Someone can have a dream because he carried the day's activities, the day's consent to bed. But when you see vision whilst asleep, it goes far more than what you are familiar with. Am I helping you? Yes. Because if 
you add the next, let's go to the next, then I explain better than we are trying to run up the service. Your Majesty, while you were in your bed, thoughts came, dream, to your mind about what will happen in the future. Meaning that which you don't know, that you were troubled. The revealer of mystery has let you know what will happen. Through what? Vision. Amen. Amen. And so he was lying there. There was substance he saw. The substance were not what he was thinking. The substance were vision. And not just one substance. He saw visions. What did he see? He saw an image with a head of gold, chest and arm of silver, belly and thigh of bronze, legs of iron, the feet of iron clay. He was not thinking about this. But he was thinking about what will happen after him. And God, using the knowledge of what he knows of, to reveal to him the things he is concerned of and does not know. Should I still say it again? God was using what he was familiar with to communicate a message about that which concerns him he cannot apprehend from divine standpoint. When God reveals something to you, sometimes you will need someone to explain Sometimes also, if you have the gift, you can understand. There are times that people who even have the gift to understand will not understand until they see God for the revelation of the vision to come to human standpoint, human level, and so they will understand. That when the king was lying down, he saw things. The head of gold was himself. Then there was silver. Silver in, on the chest, silver on the arm. It was talking about two kingdoms that will merge and come after him. And all these God was speaking to him, he did not understand. Yet he concerned himself about the future. Turn to your neighbor and say, the future is with God. You want to know what tomorrow will be? Seek God. And so it is always wrong to say, tomorrow I will do this, I will do that. Who are you? Somebody holds your life. Amen. And the belly of bronze and the type of bronze, Grecian Empire. And then the leg of iron, the Roman Empire. So strong. When you go home, read Daniel chapter 2. And then the feet of clay and iron is where we are now. Actually, it has started, but we are not part of it. Amen. Amen. Shatayanda. <laughs> I pray God gives you understanding. The clay mixed with iron is a mixture of race. 
And we cannot say it is not there today. You remember I told you God foreknew the immigration system. He knew that some folks will move to Africa who are not Africans. And some folks from Africa will move to Europe or other parts of the world who are not. And there is a season for that in the world order by divine counsel. Because this time there will be a misrace. People who do not know whether they are Africans or they are Europeans or they are Americans or they are black or they are white. They will tell you Obama is black. And they will still tell you that someone whose mother is black, black. You are not getting it. Think about this thing. Uh, by Bible, virtue of Bible standards, if you read my book, you understand that the blood of the mother does not mingle with the baby in the womb. A child carries the father's blood. Are you with me? And so it is the father's DNA, but the mother's blood provides health, security, and comfort and everything the child will need whilst inside. But the child does not carry the mother's blood, carries the father's blood. And so that means if actually we have to say a mistress, this was a white woman, Obama, mother. The father is black. Okay, you say he is black. It should be understood because he carries his father's DNA. What about, I don't want to be mentioning names of those who are late now, but they are the people you know in America, but I won't mention their name. What about those, the father is white, the mother is black, and they still call them blacks. Are you with me? Shouldn't it have been that because the father is black, he is black, even though the mother is white. Would you have ever called Obama a black man? May the Lord have mercy. But they call people who are even more fairer than Obama blacks because of the same mystery. This thing has not fully come, but the Bible talks about it. The clay. And I, misculture, misidentity. He comes from there, he still comes from there. Confused. And this will continue till the rapture comes. And we'll be out. And what must happen must happen. I have taught on the rapture, so I'm not going there. But we are talking about the vision the king saw and the dream. The dream is only has to do only what he was thinking about whilst lying in bed. And God, using the dream, he gave him a vision. You concern yourself with the future. This is what the future holds. And God revealed to him. And so God talks with us. Show us his plan in vision and in dream. And God also reveals the devil's agenda over your heart to you in dreams and vision. Let's see one. Because of time, we cannot go through. I will make out time to teach this. But let's explain this so you will have understanding before we continue. Um, Matthew chapter 2, verse number 12. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 12. And maybe we will add a kind of dream. So we see three. I have revealed to you God's plan 
which was a thought in uh, Nebuchadnezzar's mind, and God made it a plan to reveal the future to him. And so we will see after Matthew, we will see Ecclesiastes 3, verse uh, 5, verse 3. Okay, Matthew, this is God revealing Satan's plan to humanity. And it came in dream. And so there are dreams you should pay attention to. But there are dreams, they don't matter, they are kind of dreams. You were thinking about that woman you saw in the church. This will be my wife. Oh God, I want to marry her. You went to bed and you dreamt having a wedding with her. <laughs> it's a kind of dream. But you saw somebody in your dream. You were not thinking about that person. Hey, God might be telling you something. Amen. Amen. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. We are talking about Joseph, the father, the legal father of our Lord Jesus. The wise men came to visit Joseph and Mary and Jesus. And when the wise men were going back, they were to go and inform Herod. And God warned them not to go back to Herod. They returned to their own country by another route. So they understood. God warned them. God warned them. Because it was Satan's plan. Let me see if I can get one more verse on this. So, uh, where, where, where is it? Let me see. One more verse on this to help you. His mercies oh, over us. Okay, let's see. Maybe uh, verse, the same verse 13 and verse 19. Let's see. Verse 13. After they were gone, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared also to whom? Joseph. And so the first one. He appeared to the wise men, the magi. And after they had gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph, the father of Mary, uh, the legal father of Jesus, the husband of Mary, in a dream as well, saying, get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. For the devil is about to search for the child to destroy him. Somebody has availed himself the authority to be used by the devil to achieve his goal. Herod was looking, is about to look for him to kill. And yet, Herod killed a lot of children that time, but missed the mark. Amen. Amen. I don't know who is after your life. It is my prayer God will reveal to you what to do. And may you have understanding and escape. Amen. And so we've seen where God revealed his plan about someone's future. We've seen where God revealed also the devil intent about someone. And so God can reveal the devil's plan, deceptive plan, and also God can reveal his plan for your life. Let's see the kind of dream, and then we will close on this, and then next Sunday, if it is God's will, or next month, we will have our uh, continuing. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, verse number 3. The reason why I say you don't have to pay attention to every dream has to do with it. For dreams result from much work 
and a fool's voice from many words. Change the version. If it's possible, change the version. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. As you are preoccupied through the day, doing this, touching that. And so when you go to bed, all will start echoing. Praise the Lord. And so you have to be very careful. I am not teaching now, but I am trying to bring knowledge to you on this. But I will teach from my notes when the time comes. You have to be very careful. But you cannot be too much careful because until you come to the knowledge of the truth, you don't have to be too careful with every dream you have. Amen. Because if you pay too much attention to such a dream, it's fantasy. It's nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a waste of time and energy. That there are dreams that matter. So what should I do, Pastor? Every day when you wake up and you thank God and you are praying over your dream, whether you remember it or not, what you have to say is, Father, I thank you for the dreams and the visions of the night. In the mighty name of Jesus, I take authority and cancel every canal dream. Dreams that came in relation to the full knowledge. That which I used to know before I came to bed. That which came across my path, got to know, saw, met, encountered all these that are not beneficial to me, has nothing to do with me. I cancel them all in Jesus' name. You've done. You go to the next one. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Every deception the enemy brought, revealing things to me, because the devil, we will see that also, the devil can make you dream. The devil can make you dream. And so every deception the enemy brought to me in the visions of the night, because there was an opening door in my life for him. And he wants to use that to execute his plan. Fear, timidity, to mislead me. Take lies for a true. I can't sell. Somebody dreamt. And that dream ended up massacring his path. He dreamt and the wife was cheating on him. And there is a distance. He traveled. The wife defended herself. But at the end, he killed the woman. It was on social media, over the dream. And the wife never cheated on him. It was the devil's plan. This did not come from God. That the devil can make you see deceptions. You need understanding and the wisdom of God to come against all these things. Amen. Amen. We pray you cancel this. The next thing is, I have said, cannot dreams. We cancel. We cancel the devil's deception. And also, anything God reveals to you being the plan of the enemy, like we read, you thank God and you cancel. Father, I thank you for revealing the devil's intent about me. I am grateful unto you. In the name of Jesus, I take authority. I cancel all the enemy's plans concerning my life. You done. God giving you a warning. It's not the same as the warning about uh, to Joseph. A warning that relates to your relationship with him. That you are going to make a decision, a choice, or do something that will affect your salvation, your relationship. 
God can warn you. And when he reveals to you that one in thanking you, asking for grace, what he wants you to refrain from, to be able to refrain from, what he is warning you to do, you'll be able to do. Amen. 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 And the fifth, God revealed his plan for you about your future. You thank him and you ask him for grace. That anywhere you have a role to play, may he give you grace, focus, to do your own, and may his way upon your life come to pass. Then you pray, of course, about the dreams you had, you have forgotten. Have you been there before? You dreamt, and you cannot remember. It happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He said, Tell me my dream, or I kill all of you. Hey, were we in your mind? He forgot it all, and he was ashamed. Do you know why? Because in those days, when a message comes to anyone in a dream, they believed the gods were revealing their intent about him to him. And so the two dreams, very important. And even if anyone is able to uh, interpret the gift, the person, the gift they had to give to the gods, the gift to the person, he says, uh, other thing. And for you to dream and forget me, the gods have left you. He was ashamed to tell. But Nebuchadnezzar had found favor with God. Yet, his heart was following the gods. And God was the one revealing something and he wanted to attribute it to the gods. And God wanted somebody to tell him the difference between God of the heavens and the gods. And so God hid the dream from him and revealed it to Daniel. Amen. Amen. So at the end of the day, he came to know there is a difference between the gods and the God. Amen. Amen. And so when you dream and you forget, you can always thank God and pray that God remind me of sometimes you are not at home. Sometimes you are somewhere else and it start coming back. You remember everything. The spirit will make you remember if it has something to do with you or something that is going to happen. He will remind you. Amen. Amen. And the dreams, you dream, you don't understand. God can make you understand or direct you to who. So you have to pray. It's not everyone you have to tell your dream to. So they will tell you, oh, you dream and you saw a white man. It was an angel, visitation, thank God. They will lie to you. So pray and let God lead you to who he wants to tell, use in telling you. Amen. Amen. And finally, you dreamt, you understood, you remember. It comes to the substance of the dream. What did you see? You remember everything. But what were the substance? Here, it will tell you whether you have to fast. Or not. A lady came to me <coughs> some years ago <coughs> and said, Pastor, I dreamt, and in the dream, I was naked, and they poured toilet on me. And I told her, Danger is waiting, shame and disgrace. I'm saying on camera, and I know she might watch it. A few weeks later, she was arrested. She was kept in jail for a long time. And that which led to that was shameful to talk about. I told her to pray. You saw the substance. This is a vision God is showing you. Retrace your steps. <coughs> and God will show you mercy. But she had no 
made up her mind to execute her plan and granted her the truth. I pray it will not happen to you. So whatever God revealed to you, may he grant you understanding. Rise and let's pray. Our brethren on Facebook and on YouTube, we love you. I have to stop saying I'm preaching in a few minutes. Because whenever, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I say that, I stay long. Uh, we love you. God bless you. Meet you coming Sunday. Church, we don't know.